hearing you say that it brings me to you know you know i get a, i get attacked a lot because um I, I i'm very bold and mm -hmm. sometimes i do call names of, mm -hmm. of false teachers mm -hmm. and um the people like i told you guys earlier are off camera and off mm -hmm. of the podcast a majority of the individuals that attack me are christian individuals mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. um because they don't like to hear the fact that okay man your favorite teacher the mm -hmm. person that you mm -hmm. love the most the person that you listen to all the time is uh, he's not teaching you right he's teaching yeah. you false doctrine yeah. it, it brings me to a place to ask a question about a certain individual i'm going to say his name because um i really don't care um, but for, to our culture, he's very big. Yeah. And I, I always say to even to the leaders or just the church in general that if the world loves you, man, there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. And the guy, he's a very gifted speaker. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I'll have my fair share of illustrations. Mm -hmm. But w I feel like when the illustration makes the sermon, mm -hmm. you know, like that's all it's about. That's yeah. why they're coming there because it's like a grand show. Like, right. what is he going to do next? Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and now it changes the narrative of, OK, he's not preaching the Bible, he's preaching himself. Yeah. And, and of course, the culture loves him now. The young generation, his name is uh, Mike Todd. Mm. And Mike Todd is an individual that he is a very talented speaker. I'm not going to you can't take that from him. Right. He is a great right. communicator in our generation. Mm -hmm. But what he's teaching is not sound doctrine. Wow. And so when you go against the culture in that way, it's like, no, don't talk about my pastor like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh, no, you're just you're you're you know, you, whatever. He, you don't see that he's trying to bring it in a different way and mm -hmm. whatever it is. Right. But like, no, it's not that. It's like he's teaching false doctrine. Yeah, like, that's there's what no is. way around that. Right. right. You know, yeah. so what would you say to even a generation mm -hmm. like that, that looks up to that, that type of preaching? Because mm -hmm. we, we've seen mm -hmm. now recently the documentaries about Hillsong and mm -hmm. the, the Carl Lentz is falling right. yeah, and right. these individuals are celebrity pastors. So yeah, yeah. like he, the guy that I'm mentioning, he is a celebrity pastor. Right. There's no doubt about mm -hmm. it. Over 3 million followers on, mm -hmm. on his following and the world mm -hmm. loves him. He, he's on mm -hmm. Good Morning America. He's on all these mm -hmm. shows. And the world literally loves him. Yeah. And to me, those are signs that you're not speaking the truth like you're yeah. supposed yeah. to. Yeah. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. 100%. Right. Yeah. First John. Not that we don't yeah. try to reach the world or speak the truth in love. But if you're making yourself so much like the world to get the world to love you, then you're, you're, they're, they're more in love with the celebrity pastor than they are the truth of God's word. And I agree. That's yeah. what I think as yeah. well. Yeah. 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 There's so many layers to that. I mean, one would be, you look at John 15 where Jesus said, uh, do not be surprised that the world hates you. They hated me first. If you tell them the truth mm -hmm. like I did, they're going to hate you too. Again, we want to try so hard to get the world to like us. There's not a verse in the Bible that commands us to try to get the world to like us. Not mm -hmm. one. Uh, what the, ver the Bible does tell us to do is to love the world, uh, the people in the world, uh, but to give them the truth, to speak the truth in love. When we, when we make the story, the illustration, or the presentation more important than the truth, then the tail's wagging the dog yeah. in, this, in this thing. Mm -hmm. And when Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy 4, one of the last things Paul ever wrote, he said, Timothy, I charge you in the presence of God uh, to preach the word. Mm. He didn't say preach the illustration. Now, there are people that are, that are very charismatic, that are great speakers. Let's, I don't take anything away from that, but you don't have to be spiritually gifted to be a great speaker. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a spiritual gift for that. You can just be a really good presenter. I mean, look at the Tony Robbins of the world, motivational speakers, people go out and inspire audiences or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. you can do that. The problem is that when you bring that into the church and your power of persuasion is all of a sudden more powerful than the word of God, mm -hmm. then something is, is tragically wrong. So when they leave that auditorium, whatever you're meeting in stuff, what are they really taking with them? Mm -hmm. Are they taking the truth of the word of God or, or are they taking uh, something about you? You never want someone to leave an audience saying, he is a great speaker. Mm. You want them leaving saying, he is a great God. Amen. Amen. God is a great God. Yeah. And so when people leave thinking more about God than they do about the speaker, then man, you've done your job. Mm -hmm. But you know, the whole idea, there's a certain part in our culture. Now we live in a culture, okay? We're not living in Poland. We're not living in Zimbabwe or, or whatever. But in our culture, you know, platform is, and, and you know, quote unquote celebrity, whether it's tiny or big, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. People look to you, but, but I think that if you want to get someone uh, to look to you as, a, as, a, as an influencer, spiritual influencer, then, then be committed to the Word of God. 
Yeah. And, and that's okay if they look to you, like Paul said, uh, find some Pauls in your life, you mm -hmm. know, uh, trusted mm -hmm. men. I mean, it's okay to look up to people like that spiritually. Don't idolize them, don't make them into gods, but it's okay to follow someone. Mm -hmm. But when you get to the point where it's more about you and they remember your name more than they remember the, the name, mm -hmm. then brother, you have, you have gone rogue yeah. spiritually. So that's the goal. Mm -hmm. um, it's God's job to keep us humble. Yes. You know, I it's, agree. Our, it's our job to keep submitting ourselves to God. Mm -hmm. and, and honestly, and, and Todd joins me in this, you know, we don't care mm -hmm. if people know who we are. Yeah. We don't care if people remember our name. Uh, it's, it's up to, you know, we don't care. I mean, if they see our books and they buy our books and stuff, that's not, but it's what's in the books. Mm -hmm. That's really important. Mm -hmm. It's not the person who wrote the book. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that is something that American Christians are, have been so gullible for. Mm -hmm. They're gullible for that, that shiny thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it is, it's that, that Carl Lentz kind of thing that's out there. It's like, oh, look at him. He's, He's dressed like Bono and he's on Oprah, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever. It's mm -hmm. like, dude, you know, and, and when you're preachers and all that, yeah, they're more worried about their tennis shoes than exactly. they are about the word of God. Yeah, exactly. And oh, so, so oh, you talking about those uh, preachers and sneakers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> you know, just stuff like that, you know, brother, I, to me, it, it, when I see that, I just go, if you, if you were as humble as you should be, I wouldn't be seeing this, mm -hmm. you know? Because, yeah. like, like Todd said, I mean, if the world is exalting you, whoa, something's gone mm -hmm. way wrong yeah. in your ministry. And I yeah. could see, I think there's two layers. I could see, I, not, I don't agree with it, but I see the mistake of churches trying to be like the world to reach the world. But then there's a whole nother level where I'm also going to try to be a celebrity at, at this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, that's just a twisted, yeah. that, to me, oh. that's spiritual warfare. Yeah. That's, that's Super, from the enemy yeah. right yeah. there. And, and, yeah. and we see that a lot, you know, in, the gen in our generation, you know, yeah. and I used to think about, man, even like, um, you know, I, I understand the whole aspect of, you know, booking preachers to preach mm -hmm. at a church, you know, well, mm -hmm. revival, sure. whatnot. Sure. I just, I, I do have, I find it hard to understand mm -hmm. why would um, well-known preachers charge 17000 to come preach the gospel. Yeah. Twenty, you, you see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Like, um, I had a recent encounter. I'm not going to say the person's name or anything, but they, they charged me $10,000. Mm, wow. First class tickets, they said it has to be, and it has My to be goodness. a hotel, two hotels. Like, I'm like... <sighs> To preach the word, mm -hmm. like you know, <laughs> right. Paul did it for free. Paul said, right. "Man, I'm gonna even do tents in your city." Right. Like, yeah. right. so I'm trying to understand, mm -hmm. you know, that whole mm -hmm. aspect. I, I feel like sometimes they, if it, it's gone too far mm -hmm. in their mind, mm -hmm. yeah. and then we we see it like in our culture, man. Everybody is like a thrive of I want mm -hmm. to be the yeah. celebrity, right. yeah. and um, you could see it like they're trying to be relevant to the culture. They want yeah. people to look at them in that way. So mm -hmm. it, it's it's scary, man. Our day in America mm -hmm. is very scary. It is, and that's one thing that even with the ministry with who you follow even in our church I'm, I'm just trying to make people fall right back in love mm -hmm. with the bible i'm trying yeah. to bring them right back to the right. bible this is what god says it's not mm -hmm. what i says right. uh, you know i'm very passionate when i preach so yeah. sometimes they they're like well why you had to be so harsh it's not a harsh <laughs> i believe yeah. what i'm preaching yeah. you know there's yeah. a difference That's you know right. and the beauty of it is we have an out if we really hold to scripture mm -hmm. yep. we can say hey you can you can throw darts at me mm -hmm. i'm just saying what the word says amen right. so really your issue is with the word so you can do whatever you want to me but i have no choice but to preach what's in this book amen yeah amen yeah mm -hmm. amen and it's just uh it's, it's been crazy um but mm -hmm. um uh lately uh, is another topic that i wanted to get onto as well because you said that the younger generations are waking up which which they are i mm -hmm. believe so yeah. um and a lot of them are going to uh reform theology mm -hmm. because you yeah. know it, it seems more cutthroat more straight to the point like <laughs> these guys are they're not giving us what these ted talks are mm -hmm. giving us you know they're right. giving us the hard word of God yeah. so um what do you think about that whole mm -hmm. aspect mm -hmm. because there's another there's another follow-up question to that yeah. gotcha. and and it's about Bible prophecy yeah yeah it, it really began in the um, late 90s when you began to see college students and young singles began to really want theology mm -hmm. and the whole reformed uh, as a whole, the whole reform camp brought that in the sense of, you know, Bible study and, and let's talk about systematic theology mm -hmm. and, you know, let's get in some doctrine and some real teaching and that kind of thing. It came with some baggage, you know, with that, but it, at least it got them thinking about the scripture, you know, you know, people were meeting in coffee shops and taking their shoes off and they worship and, you know, just stuff like mm -hmm. that. Uh, 
but what happens is, is that when, when you are, in essence, sold a system of doctrine that comes as a package, mm-hmm. it's a package deal, and Reformed theology has some great aspects to it, yeah. but when you bring in the eschatological aspect to it, uh, that's when it's kind of like, it just seems like, how did this get here? Mm-hmm. You know, what, what, this doesn't seem like it fits the rest of it, you know, uh, because they interpret the Bible literally everywhere except eschatology. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, the, it's, the, um, it's the age-old uh, Augustine problem. Mm-hmm. Even Matthew 24, is they, they interpret that. Oh, that's already fulfilled. Yeah, already exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's Preterous AD 70. You, that's yeah. where right. the, the, uh, mm-hmm. Jerusalem was destroyed, so on and right. so forth. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the thing that, you know, that, we're, that I learned at Dallas Seminary and that Todd's you know, learning now mm-hmm. is that when you, when you set your hermeneutic, which is your Bible study method, uh, to be literal, grammatical, historical, contextual, mm-hmm. when you take that format and you, that template of studying the Bible, which is the way God intended us to look at it, you take that from Genesis all through Revelation, yep. then you're going to arrive at a certain view about the end times because it's mm-hmm. literal. You simply do what they said. This, it makes so much sense. Is that when the plain sense makes sense, seek no other sense, lest you end up with nonsense. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the way you study your Bible. We got to put that on a shirt, guys. <laughs> yeah, you got to get the all on yeah, one one little yeah. patch there. But it makes it really does. It's so logical. Is that God is a logical God? He he wrote the Bible so that we could understand it. He's not hiding stuff in code. Yeah. Uh, he's not saying now this is a symbol, uh, but no one's ever going to really know what the symbol means. Mm-hmm. You're just going to be left in the dark. And so the last book that I'm ever going to write to you, I'm going to make it so convoluted and so hard to understand yeah. that you'll be scratching your heads all the way to the day you die. Yeah. That's not how God wrote the mm-hmm. Bible. Mm-hmm. He wrote the last book of the Bible as as a clear. Uh, teaching on what's going to happen at the end of the world and the hope that we have for heaven, eternity, for winning the victory over death and Satan. And it's all just right there. And, mm-hmm. and it's easy to understand if you use the right study method. Mm-hmm. But I think that's where the reform camp kind of misses it. Uh, and I'm with them on so many areas yeah. of, of doctrine and theology, mm-hmm. you know, sanctification and, and soteriology mm-hmm. and, you know, bibliology and stuff. When they get to eschatology, it's it, like... Yeah, it's, it's, it starts going downhill, yeah, um, yeah, it, which brings me to my follow-up yeah. question because, you know, I'm, I'm with the, the Reformed theology as well. Mm-hmm. I, li- I like what they're preaching, right. you know, because mm-hmm. I agree with them, and I believe yeah. that as Southern Baptists, we're pretty much entwined mm-hmm. with the yeah. same thing. Right. But um, as, as far as eschatology, that's when I disagree. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I, But I've seen the younger people, now they're adopting to that because the individuals that they look up to that are Reformed right. and that are preaching the word of God yeah, soundly mm-hmm. is like, oh, they said it, so it has to be this way as right. well. That's a and good that point. is post-millennial. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that whole post, that has been like going crazy right now. Yeah. Especially when you have individuals who are great teachers like Vadi Bachman yeah. that are literally, Love that guy. yeah, everyone yep. loves Vadi, especially right. with apologetics and yep. right. CTR movement and everything mm-hmm. like that. And then you got, you know, you got other individuals that are talking about this whole thing. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's just, it's just crazy because um, you got individuals like John MacArthur who mm-hmm. is reformed, mm-hmm. but he teaches what we teach right. with eschatology. Yeah. Right. So there is a, the same and, method and they all, the way all go yeah. to his school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so it's so mm-hmm. weird. It's like yeah. you guys all go to master, yeah. um, master seminary, but then you, it, when it comes down to eschatology, well, yeah. we won't agree with uh, John. Mm-hmm. We're going to go with this way, you know. Mm-hmm. And the whole thing with post millennial is mm-hmm. the fact that they teach um, dominion theology. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The fact that oh right. no, everything's going to get better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, when Good I look on the news, it looks like yeah. it's getting worse. So mm-hmm. what are you going to say? You know. Mm-hmm. So well, how would you respond to that whole thing of post millennial? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Two th- Two quick thoughts. Number one, I think you hit the nail on the head. Is that they see somebody that they learn to respect highly, mm-hmm. who's highly intelligent, very eloquent, very grounded theologically, and they just think anything that person says is gospel. Like, they, they got to be correct on every single view. Mm-hmm. So you, but he, we even tell people, don't believe what we're saying. Check it in the Word. Ma- right. Make sure you grapple with it mm-hmm. and you line up with what we're saying. You know, we believe people will come to that conclusion if they use that hermeneutic that Jeff shared. But I think one thing that helped me early in my walk, because I saw that too, I was like, man, these, you know, R.C. Sproul, I used to, you know, before he passed, I used yeah. to love his stuff, but same thing, he was a preterist, mm-hmm. which means they believe all that already happened and, and you know, we're going to win the world to Christ and then usher in his return. Yeah, he, but I, I think a brief, even a, even a quick look at church history, I think gives people answers if they realize the early first century church, actually I'll be talking about this tonight a little bit, 
first century church did believe in a literal hermeneutic. They didn't have it formalized and systematized like we right. do now. Right. But over church history, when, when error popped up, we had to systematize things. And that's, yeah. that's how we get systematic theology. Yeah. But from the third century to until the Reformation, the only view, it came from Augustine, was an allegorical view. Oh, it's been 300 years and the Lord hadn't returned, so this stuff must be symbolic. Mm -hmm. It must be allegory. Right. That, and then the Catholic Church owned dogma and doctrine for over a thousand years. Nothing else was allowed to be taught. Or if it was, they were burned at the stake or their works were destroyed. Yeah. Um, and, but even now we're finding, uh, Tommy Ice and a couple others are finding some documents even from that period that showed there was a remnant of believers that still believed in a literal you know, future Coming millennium. And, yeah. and then I think what happened is Martin Luther and the Reformation, John Calvin, whole nine yards, they got it right with, you know, how salvation work, works, you know, grace by faith through, I mean, grace through faith and that, but then they stopped there. Like that was the thing of their day, but they didn't keep going. And they, they just basically adopted the same view that the Catholic church had uh, with some other changes. But so if we look at it historically, we can understand how that got there. And then that whole system, that whole reform system has really not changed a whole lot since then. And they just buy it, like, you, like Jeff said, they just, people who get hooked into that buy the whole system. So they just, even if it doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. they buy the eschatology piece. Mm -hmm. But I would challenge people, do, if you're, if you're in that realm, do an inductive study on the book of Revelation. One where there's nobody telling you what any of it means. Mm -hmm. Just let the word of God speak to you or, mm -hmm. or Olivet Discourse or any of those. And just let the plain sense mm -hmm. of the word uh, and that's our, that's our challenge all the time is use a literal interpretation method from Genesis to Revelation. All f past prophecy that was fulfilled was fulfilled exactly like it was foretold. All future prophecy is also going to be fulfilled exactly like it's foretold. It takes the mystery out of it, really, yeah. and it puts it back into the plain sense of God's word. Mm -hmm. So just encourage those people. I think I would challenge them to love those speakers. You don't have to agree with somebody on every single point. Mm -hmm. But do your own study when it comes to eschatology using a literal method. And I, I believe they'll, they'll, they'll move away from that preterist position mm -hmm. and believe in a f literal future of millennial kingdom. Yeah, plus I think that there's a historical aspect to this is that you take guys like J.I. Packer, uh, like R.C. Sproul. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had dinner with both those guys individually. I what, respect what, them. What did you guys eat, McDonald's or something? Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or was it the restaurant that Roxanne's trying to make everyone go to? That's right. Yeah. Once she's going to pay she for She treated it. them too. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, and listen, I, I would follow those guys to the end of the earth. I mean, those are, those are giants of the faith. Mm -hmm. But keep this in mind. When they were coming through in their theological formative years, okay, they were studying some, sometimes in a, in a pre-Israel context. Mm -hmm. Israel had not become a nation uh, until 1948. And the books that these guys are studying are, are pre-Israel. Mm -hmm. Israel becoming a nation is the game changer in yep. this whole idea of, of eschatology. If Israel literally became a nation, like Ezekiel 36 and 37 said they would, then that means, uh-oh, then maybe this whole revelation thing can also be literal as well. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm looking at, at the, and I don't want to pick on anybody, but it's kind of the, you know, the whole Presbyterian uh, denomination is like you guys ought to be pre-mill by now all of you mm -hmm. because Israel it became a nation mm -hmm. but, so the, but even to that argument yeah. um, their their argument is the fact that we replaced Israel yeah exactly yeah. exactly if, but if we replaced Israel how come they're a nation again you know how come they're, they're mm -hmm. fulfilling the prophecy that God predicted that they would so that mm -hmm. that tells us that well, well maybe we're not the same and indeed we're not obviously mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. here's the thing so so the idea that we as Christians are going to make this planet better and better and better, and Jesus is going to look down from heaven and go, I'm going to join those guys. <laughs> that, that is not going to happen. Yeah. That is not going to happen on this planet. So the post-mill view, to me, is, is the most untenable view scripturally. Mm -hmm. um, ah mills and post-mill people, typically, they want to put the rapture event at the end of the tribulation, if there even is a tribulation. Yeah, they don't, they don't even, yeah. a lot of them don't even believe Yeah, the Amel rapture, position yeah. doesn't even believe yeah. it, yeah. Or even believe in a, in a tribulation mm -hmm. period. So you've got all this ethereal truth floating out there that nobody can nail down. And the only people that can really nail it down are the pre-mill folks mm -hmm. like us and the pre-trib folks. 
So again, the idea, I know that John Piper was saying something recently about how, you know, Christians are gonna, are gonna go through, you know, all these things. I had a, mm. uh, there's a they're very famous podcast that's, that's, uh, that's really gaining momentum. These two ladies were talking the other day and someone mm. sent this to me and they were saying things, this dangerous doctrine of the rapture. She said, don't they realize that if you teach someone that they're gonna be taken in the rapture and they're not taken in the rapture, then we as Christians are going to face the mark of the beast. We might even take the mark of the beast. And I'm just going, the level of biblical ignorance here. Wrong on so many levels. Th th there's so <laughs> many layers to unpack about how ignorant that is, biblically speaking. But see, that's what happens when you don't take the Bible literally. You end up with the, all these, well, it could be this, could be this, could be this. And you never really know what you believe. Mm -hmm. So once again, to Todd's point, so study the Bible. Do it for yourself. Uh, read it like it's written and see what conclusion you come to. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to automatically understand everything. Mm -hmm. I don't. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it does mean you'll get a sense of what's going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's right there. It's God's not hiding it. Yeah. yeah. And even um, to follow up, because I know that uh, we're running short on time, but um, the, the, the question even within that, because, you know, of course, individuals that are great influencers and speakers, mm -hmm. you know, of course, we mentioned Body Bachman. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, he, he's very, uh, um, how you say, not persistent. Well, persistent as well, but he's very uh, convincing in a sense of mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. the individuals like us who believe in the rapture, man, they're, they're literally delusional. Mm -hmm. yeah. They said because mm -hmm. 500 yeah. years ago that what happened was a man had an epiphany yeah. It, it, this is not in the Bible. This mm -hmm. is not no, you know. So to yeah. him is like, yo, yeah. these guys are ridiculous. You know, there is no Israel. Like we took over things yeah. and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And of course, they 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 go based off of what when. Um, Jesus mm -hmm. said, you know, on this rock, I would build my church mm -hmm. and the gates of hell would not prevail over the church. So they mm -hmm. look at it like, oh yeah, we're going down, but we're going to go right back up again mm -hmm. and we're, you know, mm -hmm. we're going to prevail. So yeah. Yeah. what we're teaching is mm -hmm. irrelevant and is actually mm -hmm. a delusion. And if, I, I get yeah. it because, mm -hmm. you know, you've seen the movies Left Behind and mm -hmm. you know how you can interpret Left Behind. Yeah. So that, that, that caused a little harm towards our belief right. in, in some mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. Cheesy movies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, what, how would you respond yeah. to the fact, you know, that there is going to be an actual rapture and that it did not, it, it w didn't come from a man who had an epiphany, who had a vision that God, quote yeah, unquote, right. you know, what, what would you say to that? Yeah. Yeah. You got to go back to what, ask the question, what does the Bible say? That, that is the ultimate trump mm -hmm. card right there. What does the Bible say? Yeah. The, the question is not whether or not the rapture came, uh, became to be popular through Darby or through some yeah. you know, theologian back three or four or 500 years ago. The question is, does the Bible teach Amen. it? Because certain areas of doctrine have, have enjoyed popularity and, and been demonized at certain points. Mm -hmm. uh, salvation by grace through faith was not popular until 1500. Mm. Until in terms of the whole church mm -hmm. wide, until Martin Luther came in. Yep. So you go back to the early church, what did they believe? Mm -hmm. And uh, in my book, Wake the Bride, I list uh, about 20 something passages of scripture that show clearly that that early church expected Jesus Christ to come back at any time. And so that meant pre-trip. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2 Thessalonians chapter two, Paul nailed it. I mean, he went after that with a a bazooka gun, mm -hmm. uh, this whole idea that Christians are going to go through the tribulation. He says, no, 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 that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. The restrainer is going to be removed. We're going to be removed from the, the earth through the Holy Spirit's influence through us. And then the Antichrist will be revealed. Mm -hmm. So Paul sets the chronology for us. There. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you don't know that unless you read your Bible. Yeah. So that's why we tell people if they get anything out of this podcast is go back to the scripture yeah. and read it for yourself. Amen. Amen. And yeah. that, that's the big the big sledgehammer they use mm -hmm. is, oh, Darby invented it. Mm -hmm. And, and it was, it, it's not in the Bible. It wasn't, didn't exist before then. But it's just simply not true. But when people hear that coming from someone who they highly respect, Mm -hmm. They immediately shut down and say, "Oh, they well, oh, they must be crazy if they believe He's that." Got a no, mm -hmm. look, look in your in your Bible and see what it yeah. says. You can't say the rapture is not in there, yeah. uh, and even the Darby argument is is has been debunked over and over again. Mm -hmm. Tommy Ice, uh, mm -hmm. who we're going to have on our show here in, a, in our mm -hmm. podcast in a couple of weeks, um, has been doing a ton of research re uncovering all these early early and uh, medieval era church history documents that show no people back then even believed in the imminency of the mm -hmm. rapture and that it was literal in future and stuff like that but people latch on to that darby thing because it's an easy bullet point it's an easy one-off argument yeah, that they use mm -hmm. yeah and they and then they say he got it from some 
teenage girl that had a vision or some goofy yeah, thing. Yeah, like that. that's that's the whole yeah. yeah. So so as soon as people hear that, oh wow, yeah, that's that's out there. That's wacko. Yeah. So that whole view must be wrong. But d- don't don't buy that. Go look in your Bible and see what your yeah. Bible says. Mm-hmm. It's like Jeff said, he's got two full pages in his book of every reference that shows in an imminent of the early church believe in the imminency of, of Amen. the rapture. So Amen. yeah, it's a great book that, that you should check yeah. out as well. That camera right there, that camera. There we go. Right there. Yeah. It's called, <laughs> can we still believe in the rapture by Dr. Ed Heinsen and Dr. Mark Hitchcock? That's a good one. I'm telling you, these are two eminent scholars. Yeah. One just went to be with the Lord here last year and the other's a great friend of ours. But uh, you know, again, you know, you have people that, that will point you to the scripture mm-hmm. and just to say, what does the Bible say? Yeah. And my friends, that's all you need. That is, that, that arms you up Amen. and then puts you in a position of confidence. Amen. Yeah. And um, before we go into final thoughts, um, yeah. just one more question. Mm-hmm. Um, do you believe that the Antichrist is alive today? And if he's alive, do you think he's a babe? Or do you think <laughs> that he's a grown man, like yeah. waiting in the wind? Mm-hmm. Could be on that little hill over there, I mean, yeah. that little building or something, mm-hmm. you know? Like, what, what, what are your thoughts on yeah. that? Yeah. I, do, I do think that he's likely alive today. I yeah. think that uh, if the, even if the rapture doesn't happen for another 40 years, he has to be alive Mm -hmm. because no 10 year old is going to be the antichrist, you Mm -hmm. know? And so, yeah, I do believe he's alive. I think Satan has a candidate for antichrist in every generation, Mm -hmm. how old he is and how close we are. I can't make that call. And here's why I think that with the signs that we're seeing right now are so acute and happening with such acceleration that on the one hand we go, man, is it going to happen for lunchtime? Yeah. You know, kind of thing. On the other hand, and, and this is where my mind gets blown. This mm-hmm. is the hashtag mind blown moment. Yep. In 2 Peter 3, 9, it says that God uh, is long suffering, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Mm-hmm. And when I contemplate the patience of God yep. and the love he has for the lost, then I say to myself, God, I, I'm not putting any time limits yeah. on you. And God, I think, wants us to know that he's waiting for that last Gentile mm-hmm. Amen. and when that's going to happen. And I just always tell people, aren't you, get, aren't you glad that he waited for you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He waited for you so that you could be a part of the bride of Christ. There's somebody out there that you and I are going to love one day in heaven that he's waiting for right now to come to him. Mm-hmm. And he's orchestrating their lives to come to Christ. And so, yeah, on any minute now, but on the other hand, God's like, don't, don't put limits on yeah. my patience. Amen. It'll happen when I say And the healthy thing is, Every generation of believers is supposed to live with that type of anticipation. Yeah. We're always supposed to be. If he doesn't come in our lifetime, well, we need to train up the next generation to be expecting right. his return. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a mindset of anticipation mm-hmm. that we should all have in every generation of, of believers. Paul had it. Paul mm-hmm. thought the Lord was ret- returning in his lifetime. Mm-hmm. And the argument that people have is, well, then why are we even waiting? Why do we even you know, think that it could be yeah. in our lifetime? Well, number one, like Jeff said, we, we're seeing a convergence right now, like has never happened in church history. So mm-hmm. we have more reason chronologically and sign wise mm-hmm. that the Lord could return in our lifetime. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, think about it in, in a few short decades, we're all going to be in heaven anyway, mm-hmm. whether by rapture or by rupture. Mm-hmm. So we might as well live for him and teach people about the return of Christ while we have a chance. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And just think of it um, as an incentive and a motivational mm-hmm. factor to even anticipate the coming of that's Christ. Right. And that's what Paul did in that's the yeah. church. He was using mm-hmm. the rapture as a motivational factor. Right. I mean, keep going, right. keep believing, right. keep mm-hmm. grinding, keep doing whatever it is to reach the lost. Yeah. And um, I, I feel like, um, you know, even the churches today, man, I feel like we're so self-centered Mm-hmm. and inwardly focused that we forgot yeah. Matthew 28, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. we forgot those things. Right. So, um, man, that's, that's, that's my heart. And that's mm-hmm. all I want, really want to do, man. Just Amen. reach people for the, for, for the Lord Amen. and see them come to Christ. Just mm-hmm. seeing a person that was dead come to life is, mm-hmm. is more satisfying than a, it is. a, a cup yeah. of coffee, that's you know? Yeah. So, um, do you guys have any final thoughts before we go ahead and uh, close out on, on this, uh, this here, uh, what it is, a uh, dialogue or whatever it is, man. Before we well, go ahead and close out on one, this episode. One last thought related to what we were just talking about that I see happen too is a, a lot of believers who are awaiting the rapture, which is a great thing, are so focused on it that they're forgetting they're supposed to be actively waiting. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't just wait and then don't spend your whole life going to prophecy conferences. I mean, yeah, we'd love to see you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But spend more time reaching the lost. Spend mm-hmm. more time telling people about Christ. And like Jeff always tells people, have babies. If you're get married, have babies, plan your future. Cause we mm-hmm. don't know. 
and we want to, if the Lord does return in our lifetime, we want to be caught doing the things of God, mm -hmm. not waiting and just waiting for him to come and doing nothing. So we mm -hmm. need to be actively waiting for the Lord. And I think an emphasis yeah. should be that, man, we were not saved to sit in the pews. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I, I can't help but to say that every time I preach, man, like we're beyond the four mm -hmm. walls of the church. Like yeah. go get the loss. Yeah. Let's yeah. go fishing. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. another t-shirt. Mm -hmm. I would just yeah, say there it goes. <laughs> to people, Hector, is that to see, to view your life with a sense of destiny, that because we serve a sovereign God, that means he chose you and he chose you to be born right now. Yeah. Amen. And he chose you to live where you're living right now. And he chose you to look like you look. And he chose you to be where you are and to have the talents that you have. So don't, don't think that anything about you is an accident. Mm -hmm. God placed you where you're supposed to be right now. So live with that sense of I am a chosen vessel for mm. him mm. and I want to live my life with a sense of purposeful urgency uh, to know that when he does come, he's going to find me plowing that field Amen. and he's yeah. going to find me doing yeah. what, what he wants me to do. And you know what? When that happens, we're going to hear well done, good and faithful. Amen. Servant. Mm. Amen. That's what we all want. To me, that's the, the most fulfilling words to ever hear. Mm. And I always say, man, if um, God, Jesus comes, man, I want him to get, catch me either evangelizing or preaching on the stage, yeah. mm. doing nothing else, not in the shower, not, you know, <laughs> yeah. I want to be able to, I want to be, burger. yes, I yeah. want to be doing something for <laughs> yeah. him. Yeah. Just imagine standing in his presence, man. Mm. But I do want to thank you guys for, for joining me in this conversation. Mm. And I pray that this, uh, even this episode or the, this, this open dialogue, I pray that it blesses someone and it ignites more Christians on fire to to want to know about eschatology or just to want to know more about the Bible. Um, mm -hmm. If you can, any one of you guys, can you uh, pray us out? Go ahead, uh, go ahead brother. Yeah. <laughs> Lord Jesus, thank you that you're good. Uh, thank you that you loved us. You saw each of us, uh, no matter who's listening right now or watching, you saw each of us during that time when we were living life. Uh, where we didn't want you to be a part of our life. But Lord, you chased us down. You hunted us down with your love, your relentless love. You romanced us into your kingdom. And we're so glad that we get to be a part of your family, your bride. And Lord, the, just to be a sons and daughters of the Most High King. And we pray, Father, that uh, this time together would have been uh, encouraging and inspiring. Lord, that so we can live in our lives with clarity uh, with confidence and with hope. And so, Father, as we go forward today, may we go forward just being empowered uh, with what we've experienced uh, through being with you. Lord, bless every person who's listening uh, to this podcast right now. And, uh, Lord, may you use them in mighty ways uh, to make disciples of all nations. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey Amen. Um, we thank you guys for joining us. Uh, this is the Sober Mind Podcast. If you have not downloaded the Who You Follow app, please go to the app stores and download. Please subscribe because we are a listeners. Uh, we, we're, we're pretty much we. The more you subscribe, the more we're out there. So just thank you guys for joining us. We love you and uh, bye bye. <laughs>